You guys ready to worship Jesus? Come on. We're so uh, honored that you're here. Uh, my name is Michael Miller. I pastor the upper room. Um, and this is a special evening for our family to have uh, Michael and Jess and the entire Jesus image family here tonight. It's a special night, not only for uh, Upper Room, but I believe for the city of Dallas. Uh, I believe something significant uh, is going to take place in this room. Um, you know, I I've, I've, have been uh, good friends with Michael for some time, and I, I told him a while back, I said, I said, one of the things I see Jesus doing in this hour is uh, there's been many heralds, but I believe one of the things that he's focusing on is building houses, healthy houses that host his presence. And, uh, and we have fully given our hearts over to that and to see what God has built in Orlando um, with Michael and Jess and their yes, and to go and to visit uh, what is happening with Jesus Image Church and the presence of the Lord, the value that they have for the presence of the Lord. Um, it, is, it is so special. And so tonight um, we are welcoming not just Michael and Jess, but we're welcoming uh, the Jesus Image Church, Jesus School and students. We're welcoming their family to the upper room and to Dallas. So can we just welcome them? Can you guys just say, we are so honored y'all are here. So grateful. And, uh, and so I told Michael this before we came out. I said, mi casa, su casa. So do what you do there, do it here. And I know that means one thing. We're after the face of Jesus. We're after the face of Jesus. When Jesus walked the earth, he said that the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. But I believe in this hour, he's looking for places to lay his head. He's looking for bodies that he will truly be the head of. And tonight, I wanna to declare that Jesus is the head of this gathering. He's the head of this body. And when he comes, anything is possible tonight. So will you just look and tell someone anything is possible tonight? Just say it. We are expectant that when he comes, anything can happen. I want to open up just with this one scripture. It's out of Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2. It says this. It says, in the last days, the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as the chief of the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and all the nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, come let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. And I just want to say tonight, let's ascend the hill of the Lord. Let's stand in the holy place and let's see what Jesus wants to do in our midst. Would you just lift up your heads, lift up your hands, and we declare Jesus, King of the glory. Come into this room tonight. Take your rightful place among your people, take your rightful place in every heart. Have your way tonight, Jesus, we love you.
you paid my way and death its for eyes and when it flowed down from the cross my sins were gone my sins forgot there is a grave to try to hide in this precious blood that gave me life. And in three days, he breathed again and rose to stand in my defense.
Let's lift our voice. Come on, sing that. One more time, every voice, come on. Just forget about everything, just worship the Lord, come on. One more time, Dom, one more time. Every voice. Hallelujah. Come, wonderful Lord. Hallelujah. Fill this place with your glory. Keep singing. softly now. Thank you, Lord. Give him all your attention right now. All your attention. here now. Just begin to sing in the spirit here for about two minutes. Come on, lift your voice. Come on. Jesus, Jesus said from your innermost being will flow Rivers of living water, rivers, rivers of living water. Yield your body right now. Give your body away. And let the Holy Spirit use you as a vessel. Sing in the Spirit all over the room. Keep singing, keep singing, keep singing. I promise you, you'll be happy you didn't stop. I will bless the Lord. Purpose in your heart. Sing in the Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill this house with your glory tonight. Keep singing, keep singing, keep singing, keep singing, keep singing, keep singing. Oh, you gotta let go. 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 That's it. That's it. You gotta let go. You gotta let go. You gotta let go. Keep singing for one more minute. Keep singing. Mantiele fendiora da bandiere bendio. Mintiele fendiere de bendiora da bandiere.
wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Marvelous for words. Marvelous for words. Too wonderful for comprehension. Too wonderful for comprehension. Come on, church, tell him. Like nothing ever seen or heard. Like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp? fathom the depths of your love. Who can fathom the depths of your love? Beautiful Jesus. You are beautiful beyond description. Majesty. Majesty. God. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in love of you. Again, Dami, again. First verse again. Cause you are beautiful. Come on, make it personal. Description. Too marvelous for words. Too marvelous for words. Too wonderful, too wonderful, too wonderful. Too wonderful for comprehension. Nothing ever seen or heard. Like nothing ever seen. Oh, everything in us, come on. Who can grasp? Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depths of your love? You're beautiful. Because you are beautiful beyond description. Majesty. First verse again, first verse again. You are beautiful oh, church, sing it straight to Jesus. More happens in worship than in the greatest preaching. When Jesus comes in the room, everything changes.
I feel like we're going to welcome the king right now. Unless you're on your knees or on your face, would you all stand just please? Just close your eyes right where you are. You know, Miss Kuhlman used to say, miracles happen when Jesus becomes more real to you than your need. So right now, with the eyes of your heart, you know, all day as I was preparing, my heart could just see Jesus so clearly. This beautiful face. As I was meditating on the Beatitudes, my heart was beholding at the beauty of the Son of God sitting there on the sermon, on the mount I should say, preaching the most glorious sermon in the history of the earth, this beautiful Jesus. You have to come to Him to hear Him. He whispers more often than He yells. Because of that we have to draw near and He has promised to live in our worship, to live here. To live here build him a house right now come on open your heart you know the closer you get you just gotta let go your dignity is not important I promise you it doesn't even register in heaven it doesn't matter at all oh Jesus who is like you in the heavens help me Jose hit him high who is like you in the heavens who is like you in the heavens? Who is like you, Jesus? Who is like you, Jesus? I want you to begin welcoming the King with your oil. Pour it out. Pour it out. You're welcome here, precious Jesus. You're welcome right here tonight. This is your house. We are your people, the sheep of your pasture. This is your house tonight. This is your house and we are yours. Close your eyes, let's worship just a little more. Just a little more. You know, Jesus makes the difference, not us. Sermons don't heal and sermons don't save. It's His presence. It's Jesus Himself. Why don't you just lift your hands right now and say, Holy Spirit, I welcome you to do whatever you want to do. However you want to do it tonight. Touch my life. Oh, Lord my God. No, we're going to sing it, but that was good. Come on, let's worship.
Nothing matters, nothing matters but Jesus. Only he'll matter at the throne, so just live like it now.
Lift your hands in his presence. Come on, everyone. All eyes on Jesus. Wonderful Lord. You are our life. You are life. You are resurrection and life. You raise us and keep us alive. You know, tonight, if you want him to touch you, he will. If you'll let him right now, he already is. Oh, Jesus. We relinquish our own ability, our own ideas. Our strategies that are wood, hay, and stubble. If there's one worthy to open the scroll and break the seal, it's the Lamb, the Lion of Judah, who's overcome the root of Jesse. Can you take 30 seconds? and gently minister to the Lord in the Spirit. I feel the power of God flowing already. With every eye closed, just begin to minister to the Lord. everyone here for 30 seconds to sing in the spirit just gently 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 we have to learn how to live here this is our home Chris I see you guys keep singing in the spirit just trust me Chris I see the fiery hand of Jesus Coming again. Come, wonderful Holy Spirit. Hey, babe, go over to where Miller is. Just go help Miller. Go over to where Miller is. He's right there. You guys pray. Come on, pray, pray, pray. When you pray in the Spirit, the anointing of God begins to flow. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, Jesus, for the fiery hand of God will grip and possess you both in the most holy, sometimes annoying way. Lo, will you go help Lo? I feel something so strong here. There's leaders all over the room, all over the room that God is, God is marking right now. He's targeting you. If you let go, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Reinhard Bunke said, teach me to mind now what will matter in the end. One thing matters, has God done it? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, pour your glory out upon them. Can you just stay with us and just pray? I'm telling you, just pray. Let the fire of Pentecost consume them. Let the love of Jesus, the one who has fire in his eyes, possess them and their people oh pr play that thing court it is not by might it is not by power but it is by my spirit saith the Lord yes Lord uh, Rev and Rivers would you go pray for the two pastors that Michael Lowe and Jess are praying for now Rev Rev would you go lay your hands on them? Let mighty miracles flow in their lives, mighty healings. Rev, Rev, right there, right? Just release the power of God, Rev. No, no, that's Larissa. Go to Jess, help him out, help him out. Let the power for healing and miracles flow through that house. Rev, go to the guy on the ground. Go to the guy on the ground, release the anointing. Come on. Pray. 
When you pray for others, God will touch you. Let the fire of God come upon Chris. Let the power to heal the sick and cast out devils flow through that man in Jesus' name. You know what God can do with one man who catches the anointing? Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I pray. I want everyone here to lift their hands in agreement with me. Lord, I pray that notable miracles will flow through both of them. Signs, wonders, and miracles. In the mighty name of Jesus. That healings would begin to flow within a few weeks in that house. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Can we seal that with praise? Can we seal that with praise? Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. He actually broke through the ground like the victorious first fruits, the risen Son of God. Come on, bless His name. Jesus, who is like you, we love you. We love you. We love you. Holy, holy, holy. Keep playing that. Keep playing that. Keep playing that. Holy, 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 holy. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy. Worthy of glory and honor and power and majesty. Might. Wisdom, riches. is yours forever and ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. We are not alone tonight. Hallelujah. Oh. We love you. We love you. Would you grab a seat very quickly with no one moving? Once you're seated, just I need you to stay in your seats for the next 15 minutes. If you have to use the restroom, ask your neighbor for a diaper, but do not move. Do you know the Lord waits to see if we'll choose to move on without Him? I, that one flew over like those UFO clips. Jesus waits to see if we love Him enough to refuse to move on without him. The Bible says, no flesh shall glory in my presence. If it's not of the Spirit, the Lord does not accept it. He told Israel, do not put your tool to the altar. 
You say, God wants my best. No, your best isn't accepted either. He wants to do it. Your best isn't good enough. My best is not good enough. He wants to do it. The Holy Spirit loves Jesus more than anyone in this room does. He loves him. The Father loves Jesus, and Jesus loves the Father, and Jesus loves the Spirit, and Jesus loves the Father and the Spirit, and the Spirit loves Jesus, and the Spirit loves the Father. And we call this this Trinity unity, this beautiful love that is exchanged between them, so much so that Jesus says, as the Father has loved me, so I love you. Tonight, before we go any further, I'm going to preach the gospel, the glorious gospel of Jesus. I'm giddy inside already. Don't you feel the Lord here? How many of you sense the presence of Jesus here? You should. You should. And the Bible says that it's the rebellious who dwell in a dry land. Dry spells don't belong to the believer. How can you be in a dry spell if there's a river in your belly? How close is in? How close is inside? He can't get any closer. He's right there from your innermost being, from your belly will flow rivers, rivers of living water. And Jesus said of this drink, he said, if you'll drink this, you'll never thirst again. If you'll drink this, you'll, you'll never drink from the world. If you'll drink of my presence, the Spirit himself, the world will look like the compromised harlot that it is unable to satisfy the soul. So tonight, I want to preach the gospel. The gospel is heaven's song. The word gospel means good news. That might be the greatest understatement in the English language. It is more than just good news. It is so good, it makes no sense to the human mind. In John chapter 3, verse 1, the Bible says there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Listen carefully now. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from God, who's come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Nicodemus basically came to say, we believe your bio, and I'm part of your fan club. I realize I'm in Dallas, which is the uh, belt buckle, <laughs> which is hilarious. The Bible belt, huh? Thank God for the scriptures. The scriptures are perfect. If you don't know the Jesus of the Bible, you know the wrong one. The scriptures are living bread. But if you don't fall in love with Jesus, you'll use the scriptures to bring division and destroy people's hearts. I pray that Dallas is known as the Jesus belt. Jesus said, you search the scriptures to find life. But the scriptures speak of me, and you won't come to me so that I can give you life. Oh, sure, you can burn in hell, having memorized chapter and verse. And you should know chapter and verse, but make sure you're in love when you're memorizing. And so Nicodemus said, we know you're from God. Well, I'm sure all of you went through that as a little child. Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Yup. Do you believe he came to the earth? Yep. Do you believe he was born in Bethlehem? Uh-huh. It must have snowed that night. We celebrated on Christmas. Yeah, I believe all that. Do you believe angels came? Yes. 
Do you believe he was buried? Uh Uh-huh. I checked that one off too. Do you believe he's he's raised from the dead? Three days later, did he break the ground? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, I believe that. Okay, you're in. Good job. This is what Nicodemus is doing. He's saying, I believe your bio. I'm checking off all the boxes. But Jesus immediately changes the gear and ups the standard. In verse 3, he says, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Basically, Jesus said this, I'm glad you believe my bio. But you need to be born again. The scripture says even the demons in hell believe his bio. Do you know proof of our salvation is not the fact that we're in the room tonight. Our attendance is not proof of our salvation. His residence in us is proof of our salvation. So Jesus didn't even say, you need your life changed. Because a changed life is still hell bound. It's still not good enough. You don't need a changed life. You need a brand new life. Jesus doesn't change lives. I said this last time I was here. Don't mistake my microphone as a life coach microphone. I did not come to life coach you tonight. This isn't a TED talk. You're going to get raised from the dead tonight. (laughs) Completely raised from the dead. Jesus is not in the business of putting bandages on cancerous sin. What he does is he goes into the depths of a soul. Nails it to a tree by faith. The curse of your sin gets cursed on the cursed tree. And it dies forever. And by faith, you go in the ground and you are raised again to newness of life. That's the gospel. And Jesus said, Nicodemus, I'm really excited you think I'm from God. But that's not what you need. It's beneficial. But you need way more than to be part of my fan club. I don't need admirers. I need resurrected disciples. And we've watered this thing down a little and we taught you that if you sat in the pew, you were born again. That's hilarious. I have a golf cart that's in my garage and it'll never be a Toyota Tundra. So Jesus responded to Nicodemus in the night because Nicodemus came in the night. And you know what? We all come to Jesus in the night. (laughs) We're all sons and daughters of darkness when we come to Jesus. Our father is the devil. You're like, what? Yeah, that's the Bible. That's what Jesus said. This is the gospel. And so Nicodemus comes in the night Jesus is not afraid to talk to you in the night. He's not afraid to answer in the night. And we typically come to him in the night as he says in John's gospel. Because when we're bound by darkness, we enjoy darkness. Lest our deeds be exposed in the light. But I want to tell you tonight. The scripture says that if we come unto him, he will by no means cast us away. He doesn't know how. Jesus doesn't know how to cast us away when we come to him. Who else said these words? Come unto me, all you who are weary. You're tired of you. Are you tired of trying to obey your way in? All you who are weary and you're heavy laden, you're carrying the world you are never called to carry. Come unto me if you're tired, if you're carrying this weight, and I'll give you rest. I'll give you rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy. My burden is light. In other words, I'll carry it for you. This is Jesus. Verse 4, Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? 
And Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Here's the answer. Are you ready? For the wind blows where it wishes. And you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Oh, you know what the answer is? The wind. The wind of the Spirit. While we were singing earlier, I was praying, blow, Holy Spirit, blow. There is so much more to salvation, listen to me, than the mere removal of sin, though that is majestic and so needed, and we could spend eternity marveling at it. But much more takes place when we meet Jesus than the mere removal of sin. The Holy Spirit Himself literally comes to live in our bodies. Jesus said, you will never be without me. I will never leave you alone. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. It is a brand new life. Jesus went on to say, he who sins is a slave to sin. In other words, attending Christian events, I'm so grateful you came tonight, but this meeting will not save your soul. Watching YouTubes, watching our YouTubes or Upper Rim's YouTubes will not save your soul. Attending our events certainly will not save your soul. Jesus' image does not save. Only Jesus himself saves. You have to come to him, the actual person. And when you do, the Holy Spirit himself, the wind of heaven, literally descends into your being and makes your body his home. So much so that Paul writes, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Please hear me. With everything in me, I'm begging you to come to Jesus tonight. I am. I don't. Unapologetically, I'm, I'm begging you to come to him. He, he loves you. He sees you in the night. Freedom is the fruit of salvation. Not church attendance. Church attendance is good. I'm a pastor. But are you free? That's the question tonight. This is the question. Are you free from sin? experientially free have you been freed from the bondage of sin can you control your members whoever told you that you have to be bound to sin until the day you die lied to you John the Apostle the beloved writes to the church in his epistle this is what he says, he who sins is not of God. It's not to say you never sin. It's to say this, that the nature of it should feel foreign. It's not the lot of the Christian. When the God who created the universe comes to live in your body, he sets people free. He doesn't just help you along. Your body becomes his house. We want to lead movements, but we can't control our scrolling. We want to fill stadiums, but we can't get off websites. Listen to me. You can be free tonight. Completely free. You can leave this house tonight, this house of the living God, as the house of the living God, and be completely free. Jesus said, whom the Son sets free is free free indeed this is the gospel you can't free you please hear me you can't wash you you cannot redeem you the whole point of redemption is the perfect for the imperfect it's the great exchange 
You can't liberate you. You can't kill you. You cannot bury your issues and you cannot raise yourself from the dead. You have to come to Jesus tonight. Again, the fruit is your life. Your life. I just preached at a place here, a big ministry. It was a couple years ago. Who trains missionaries. And I preached the same gospel I'm preaching here. And three to four hundred came to give their lives to Jesus. And my friend Andy Bird will tell you the same thing. I flew to, flew to Kona and preached the same message. And before these missionaries went out, two to three hundred came to give their lives to Jesus. Uh, uh, we run a ministry school, but coming to ministry school doesn't save you either. Some people say, I, I just don't know if I'm born again. I, you mean you don't know if the Ancient of Days lives inside of you? you? You know you drove to this meeting tonight. You know you're wearing a shirt. But you don't know the Lion of Judah came in? Is there anything more measurable? Peter writes, make your election sure. You know the gospel is not just for the lost. The church needs the gospel. And we've taught a generation, if you can just get on in and check your Sunday box. and It's all good, especially if you live in Dallas, then you did the Texan thing. You, but no, 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 no. Here's the question. Have you actually met Jesus? and yielded your life to him and made him Lord, that means complete owner of your members and life, have you laid your dreams down and, giving them, and given them to him? Have you taken your cross upon you, put on the uniform of the Christian life, which is a uniform of wood, and followed our Savior in the great procession of faith who also carries a cross. A great woman of God said, the cross gives you God, then God gives you a cross. That is the Christian faith. Not, oh Jesus, please come into my heart. That's beautiful, but there's more to it. Is your life his own? Have you exchanged your life for his? Is he everything to you? Have you turned from the world? from Satan, and yes, from your own will, and completely trusted in Jesus himself for your salvation and given over your life to the Lord that he is. This is the gospel. And I'm telling you tonight, under the authority of the word of God, not my opinion, that if you come to Jesus in this way, the porn will get fried. Listen to me. The life of sin will get fried. The strength of the flesh will get completely pulverized in the glory of the Holy Spirit. Jesus will never remind you of your sin again. He'll never bring it up to you. He'll never throw it in your face. The Bible says he will take your sin and remove it as far as the east is removed from the west. He will take it and throw it into a sea called forgetfulness you will receive newness 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 of life and one day one day i never thought i would turn 43 i never thought miller would ever be 54. i never thought i'd be 43. i met rev and rivers when i was 27. I remember when they got healed. He was paralyzed. He got healed. I remember when he got healed, I was 25. 26. I'm here to tell you, this life, the Bible says, is but a vapor. 
We will all stand before the Lord. And listen very carefully. Either he tarries and we stand before him, before the glorious throne with the sea of glass. Listen to what the Bible says, mingled with fire. With cherubs and living creatures surrounding the throne who are covered in, with eyes inside and out. Crying out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. We don't want to stand before this glorious holiness in our own merit. We want to stand before this wonderful throne in the merit of Jesus, in His accomplishment. Should the Lord return, friend, listen very carefully. When He returns, He is returning for two types of people, an enemy, or a bride. I, I'm, I'm not. This isn't mean preaching. This is Bible. You need to hear this. This is the word of God. You know the Bible says. For every your word is settled in heaven. When Jesus returns. We will either be his bride. Or his enemy. How you respond to the gospel. Will determine that. I'm begging you as your brother tonight to come to the one who will set you free. And you will never be the same. Yeah, you have to leave everything. You do. You have to come and die tonight. You got to. But when you meet him tonight, you'll forget about what you let go of. In a second. With every head bowed and eye closed, listen very carefully. I don't care if you've been in church your whole life. Are you free from sin? That's the question. Tonight, if you want to be set free, truly, truly free. For those of you watching all around the world, if you want to be free tonight, come to Jesus. For those of you in this room, every head bowed and eye closed. I don't want anyone looking around. Every head bowed and eye closed. If you want to give Jesus everything tonight and see his blood set you free from the chain of sin actually and leave a free man or a free woman. I want you to put your hand up right now. Say, that's me. I want everyone to stand. There's hands everywhere. I want, you, I want everyone to stand. Thank you, Jesus. If, listen very carefully. If you brought someone tonight, if you brought someone tonight, you know them. Most likely some of you brought people hoping that they would give their heart to Jesus tonight. If you brought someone or you're wondering whether the person next to you even knows the Lord because you know them, it's questionable. I want you to do the work of the evangelist right now and say, hey, do you need, do you need to get down there? And then I want you to bring them down tonight. Children, listen very carefully. Children. If while I was preaching the gospel, you felt something inside of you say, I want to give my life to Jesus tonight. I want you to look at your mom and dad right now. And I want you to tell them, Mom, I want to get saved tonight. I want to give my life to Jesus. Children, hear me. You're not too young. If you can understand what I'm saying, you can meet Jesus tonight. You'll probably meet him better than we all have. If you raised your hand, or you wish you did, I want you to get down here right now and come give your life to Jesus. Do not hesitate. Come on. Blow through everyone and come give your life to Jesus. Come on. Come give your life to Jesus tonight. Come give your heart to the Lord. Oh, Jesus. Thanks. Come on. Come give your life to the Lord. Come on. Oh, give the Lord praise. Come on. Give your life to the Lord. It's the work of the Spirit. Oh, guys, come on. The Bible says when one, when one repents, all of the heaven celebrates. Give your life to Jesus tonight. Give your life to Jesus tonight. This is wonderful. Yeah, come on, Heath. 
Look, if there's, if there's more of you, you're not going to interrupt me. Come, come, come get clean. Come get clean tonight. Come get clean. Come get clean. Sin is a cruel master. Sin is a liar. Sin is a slave master. Come get free tonight. Thank you, Lord. I praise you, Father. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. You know, they're already weeping. Some of these young people are shaking and crying. You see, it's not by might. It's by, by my spirit. Oh, Jesus. Would everyone who came forward, would you look at me? Unless you're having an encounter with the Lord, then don't even worry about me. But I want you to look at me. Tonight, everything changes. Tonight, you're going to give your life over to the Lord the best you can. And when you do, Jesus will meet you on those terms. It's not about your perfection right now. It's about your heart. We are going to pray and declare our faith. But it's not about the perfection of our declaration if our heart is not engaged. Tonight you're just going to give Jesus everything. And when we do pray, you're really going to meet him. And you're going to leave here brand new. I said they're going to leave here brand new. Brand new. What I'd like to do is I'd like everyone in their seats who did not come forward. And by the way, when I stop praying, I promise you, you will not interrupt me. There are a few meetings where Jesus comes so close. If there's any question in your heart, I would, I would, if it were me, I would grab the hem of his garment tonight. If, if you're in your seats tonight, you didn't come forward, I do want you to stretch your hands towards these people as an act of faith. And the posture of your heart is going to be this, that they will live a victorious Christian life and never know a day away from the Lord. Not a single day. For those of you who came forward, I want you to lift your hands now to heaven just the ones who came forward and offer your lives you and your seats you're praying now for the victory of the Christian life to be known in them are you guys ready to pray are you ready now to give your life over here we go close your eyes if you've come forward I want the whole house to declare this in faith this is our faith this is our Jesus are you ready Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father. come on in boldness Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father. I have sinned against you Forgive my sin. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Cleanse my soul. Forgive my sin. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of the living God. That you came to the earth. You were born of a virgin. Lived a perfect and holy life. That you suffered and died. That you shed your blood on the cross. That you were buried. Three days later, raised from the dead. You are the Son of God. You are the King of glory. And Jesus, I believe that you have ascended to the right hand of the Father. 
and that you are seated there as the eternal king. And I believe that you are coming back again to rule and reign forever and ever. Now here we go. Receive my life, Lord Jesus. I repent of my sin. I repent of the world. I turn from the devil himself. And I place my faith in you. And your shed blood. Come and live in my heart. Me for you. And you for me. In Jesus' name. I am yours. I am born again. Amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, come on. Don't tip him. Don't tip him. Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Miller, Miller, would you come? Please, Michael, please. I want everyone to stay where they're at. We're standing because of, we are honoring what just happened. Jesus died for this moment. Little children. How precious he is. <laughs> I see flocks everywhere. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Guys, there's a few things that you need to do. Listen to me very carefully. Every day, you can get closer and closer to Jesus. Every day. There's a few things you need to do daily. Number one, read your Bible. Read your Bible. And the church said, the Bible is the living word of God. It is the bread of life. Jesus said, man doesn't live. Listen to the, to the language. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. In other words, the scriptures are a matter of life and death. When you feed on the scriptures, you feed on the life of Jesus himself. Every day read your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, Michael, Larissa, and the upper room team, they will help you get a Bible. Number two, listen carefully, every day pray. Prayer teaches prayer. If you don't know how to pray, there's one thing the Holy Spirit will teach you to do is how to be his friend. He loves that. Jesus made it very simple. When you pray, go into your room and close the door. For everyone who owns a door here, you can all do that. If you don't, buy a curtain. If you don't have a curtain, find a car. If you don't have a car, find the woods. Get alone and pray. All right, number three, you need to get baptized in water. Given the rowdiness of Upper Room, who I've been running with, with now since 2012, I think, they know how to baptize. They hold you down long enough to get it all out. <laughs> all right? Get baptized in water. That is not a recommendation. That is not a bow on top of the Christian life. There is a glorious experience in the Spirit. The old man is murdered in the water, and you burst forth free from this perverse age and, was, and, and world system. Get baptized in water. All right. Number four, you need to give your heart to a people in God's presence. That's called church. Now, not every building is a church. It can have a cross on it. It doesn't make it a church. Jesus makes it a church. Jesus said this, if two or three gather in my name, I will be there in the midst of them. If he's there, it's a church. If he's not, it's a building. You need to find a church that loves the Word of God, the whole Word of God. All right, like Bill says, even the maps. Find a pastor that loves the entire Bible and doesn't just believe it theologically, but teaches it and lives it. That's why I love this house. This is a great church, okay? Find a pastor in a church that loves the Bible. 
Number two, find a pastor in a church that loves the presence of God because the presence of God is God, the Holy Spirit. The presence of God is God himself. Lastly, lastly, Jesus made a promise. And this is what he said. I will, listen very carefully, I will baptize you. That's his office. John said it of him, I should say. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. He said, you will receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. In other words, you receive the same power that Jesus operated in. And there's an old saying, he's in me for me, but he's on me for you. If you have people in your life who need to know the Jesus you just met, and I'm sure all of you do, friends, family, moms, dads, cousins, it won't be through your debating. I didn't debate you tonight. I'm not that good a preacher. The Holy Spirit did this tonight. You have been promised the same power. I'm not just saying this because I'm preaching here, but I believe in this church. And it's been my honor to be part of this house. I feel like I'm part of this house. I believe in Michael and I believe in Lowe. I know them. I know the way they are with their children. I know the kind of marriage they have. I know the way they burn for more of God. Give your heart to a people in the presence of God. Give your heart to pastors and leaders. This would be a wonderful house. And if it's not this house, find a house and connect with God. Bro, would you, would you, do you have anything you'd like to say or bless them? I just think it's important they connect with the church. I love the little children. <laughs> you have the same Holy Spirit inside of you that Mr. Michael has inside of him. You know, when I got born again um, and was in a setting like this, um, but it was just as tangible and just as real, and I had built a life that I knew needed to change, and I didn't know how to make that change, but I knew something was changing. Wow. And I made this promise to the Lord and some of you older guys and girls, this was the promise that I made and I'm still making it now 20 plus years later. It was, Lord, I'm gonna give you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You pick your cross up every single day and there are changes that need to happen but those changes are gonna happen day by day. A massive, you're never going to be the same. You will always remember this spot on the carpet <laughs> this Friday night. But now you're on a journey of daily saying, Jesus, my life is not my own, it's yours. And you daily pick up that cross. So just say this with me, Lord, I'm gonna give you tomorrow. Lord, I'm gonna give you tomorrow. Come what may, Come what my, may. Life my life is yours. And we daily pick up our cross. Jesus name. Amen. 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 So beautiful. Amen. So beautiful. Why don't we welcome them home guys? Come on. Come on. Yes, Lord. So good. Michael is going to speak to you guys here for a minute, but let's love them as they go back to their seats. Yeah, and then we're going to receive communion and believe the Lord for mighty miracles. Amen. Come on, give the Lord praise. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. We're going to come to the Lord's table here in just a second. Um, the gospel's been proclaimed. I believe the power of God is going to be demonstrated here in just a little bit. Um, and signs and wonders. Just feel the Lord's compassion to heal tonight. Um, but I have the honor uh, to invite you into something. Um, this evening, um, was not birthed in my heart. It wasn't birthed in Larissa's. It wasn't birthed um, 
because of the upper room or someone in the city, this evening was birthed in the heart of Michael and Jessica Culianos. And they called me in faith saying, I believe we're to take Jesus nights on the road. And I said, well, that's awesome. Where do you wanna go? He said, I will feel our first city is to be Dallas, Texas. And I said, well, if you're coming to Dallas, man, you've gotta, we've gotta host it at the upper room. And so his faith provoked my faith. And as my faith was being provoked, um, his team's faith started being provoked. So Michael has asked nothing of the upper room, nothing of our team. Um, everything you see around here is all the Jesus image family. So they brought a caravan of people from Orlando to Dallas. So if you are with the upper, with the Jesus image family, would you stand up? Just want to acknowledge you guys. Look at that. Come on. So cool. So I, you, you can be seated. So, so their faith for other cities, their faith for other churches, their faith has provoked us, and now our faith is being strengthened, and our city is being touched. And they're not just coming to one city. Next week or next month, they're in Houston. I believe they're heading to Redding, California. Are there other cities? that you, what's that? There's others, okay. Because I, I really feel this. I, I wanna take an offering tonight. And I've, I really believe that this is a first fruit offering for their step of faith in touching cities. And I felt as I was praying, Michael said, would you take an offering? I felt the Lord told me to read Acts 13, and I'm not gonna read through Acts 13, but Acts 13 is, uh, the church at Antioch, and it says that they were fasting and praying, and that the Holy Spirit said, set apart Paul and Barnabas. And the elders laid hands on Paul and Barnabas and sent them. And they went to at least seven cities that I counted very quickly, but I'm sure there were more than just those seven. But here's what I thought. I thought every city that Paul and Barnabas stepped into, the church at Antioch was stepping into with them. There was something about the church in Antioch's faith to lay hands, give of their resource, and send them that touched various regions. And I feel tonight, I think there's at least seven cities, if not more, that you're heading to. But I feel the zeal of the Lord for what God has placed in Michael and Jess, and that we will send them out from the city of Dallas to these other cities and that their faith is now partnered with ours. And so I wanna provoke your faith to believe with them what they're believing Jesus is going to do. We just saw dozens of people give their lives to Jesus. We're gonna see dozens more encounter him, encounter the power of God tonight. But I believe it's going to impact thousands, if not millions. We need an awakening in our nation. We need nights like this from coast to coast, filling cities, filling churches, filling stadiums. And you know what? It just takes a small seed of someone's faith to start something like that. And I believe these Jesus nights are catalytic for regions, for churches, for church leaders. And I wanna call us to give. I wanna call us to sow. I wanna call us to do it sacrificially. So I'm gonna have you pray with me. Is that cool? Who's got faith for that tonight? All right, plenty of hands. Is there, uh, here we go. If you wanna text to give, you can pull your phone out. It's a real simple way to give. Text that number right there. Put give. And then I'm gonna pray and the Holy Spirit's gonna put a number on your heart. And we're gonna collectively sow into what Jesus is about to do from city to city to city with Jesus image and their team. Tonight was free, was it not? Was it free? 
Did you pay to get in here? I don't think you paid to get in here. In fact, Michael showed up with a check for me and for the upper room. They came bearing gifts, the gifts of their presence, the gifts of their worship and ministry, but also financial gifts. And I'm blown away. They've, they've asked for nothing. And yet we're all being touched and changed. And I pray that we can send them out of here with enough resources to touch all of these cities. So would you text that number? And uh, I'm going to pray for us. And I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to fund this, Lord, that this would be fuel for your heart, Lord, that fire that burns in your heart. I pray, Lord, we can fuel that, Lord, what you are doing through Jesus' image, Michael and Jessica and their team, their students, Lord, their staff. Father, we pray great refreshment upon them tonight. Lord, we give you praise for them. We give you honor, Jesus, for their yes. And that's what brings us here tonight, but we wanna partner with their yes. And we wanna sow, Father, into what you're calling them to do. So he who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Holy Spirit is speaking. So just, if you would, sow into Jesus' image. Give you just a second to listen. And then, do we have other means to give? Is there a, uh, we have buckets, here we go, and we have envelopes. So if you need an envelope, just raise your hand. Oh, cool. Just give you a second, if you need an envelope, raise your hand. It's amazing. Yeah, I can read the number. The number is 321-320-8040. It's 321-320-8040. It's Michael Koulianos' personal phone number. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> That's his cash app. No, that goes directly to Jesus' image. So... Um, I believe if you want to give checks or bring those envelopes, they're up front. Um, there's buckets up front, so feel free to just come on up and give those. Uh, but hey, I, I just want to say, yes, please come. Y'all come. I just want to say again from all of us collectively, thank you, Jess. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Jesus Image. We love you. Thank you for being here. John, Dom, thank you, team. Such a blessing to have y'all. Michael, thank you, bud. I love you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Lord. We've got a little worship to run or just like Sunday night? All right, let's run that thing while the people are giving.
Jesus School students have issues, as you can see. That's good. You can kill it. Thanks. They've got some issues, and uh, the best kind. Can you help me, bud, just for a little bit? We're going to receive communion tonight and believe the Lord to touch you as you come to the table. Before we do, I just want to thank Michael and Larissa. I don't know where Jesse went. She's ascended too high, as you instructed. So, love you guys so much. Thank you for letting us come here and uh, start here, and it means the world. So, can we all just thank God for this house and Michael and Larissa? I love you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And, uh, There's some other people I'd like to thank here. Obviously, John Wilde is here with our crew, and love you so much. Thank you for being here. I want to thank our whole worship team, and uh, thank you. Thank you incredible. Dom, Court, and Sabata. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Sabata's name means Sabbath. That's incredibly biblical. And then... We have a Jehoshaphat and a Sabbath, <laughs> only in Texas, only in Texas. But uh, Pastor Paul Teske and Rivers, Teske are here. Pastor Paul and Rivers, would you stand, please? Would you do that? <laughs> These are precious friends. <laughs> Love you so much. Thank you for being here. Pastor Paul serves on our board of directors. He is a charismatic Lutheran who packs a mean punch, as Chris Seedman just discovered. <laughs> Don't trust those Lutherans. <laughs> I love you guys very much, and, uh, and uh, I'm grateful for your lives. Thank you. Ryan Binkley's here. He pastors Create Church, a wonderful church in the city. Would you stand, Ryan? Yeah. Love you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ryan's had me a few times, and it's it's just been an honor to minister alongside you. What a champion and prince you are. I'm really grateful for you. The flocks are here by the droves. Uh, I'd like Heath and Jen to stand. Would you do that? Heath serves on our board as well. This is your precious wife, Jen. They have eight children, and uh, one of which is our assistant, Lily. So if you have eight kids, they're... Bound, especially if they're born again, they're bound to shake, uh, shake the world for, for Jesus. Everybody wants the flocks in their church because your church instantly grows. <laughs> My brother and Rachel are here, and uh, would you guys stand, please? Come on, she loves that. Stand up. Yeah. And their children, stand up, kids, come on. Yeah. Love you guys so much. Coming here, once I start introducing people, I realize I'm going to forget someone because I know so many of you. But um, I feel like we need to come to the table in faith tonight. In faith. And to bring our weaknesses, our ailments, our pain. You know, Mephibosheth's legs were hidden at the table of the king. And so bring... Bring all of your infirmity to the table tonight. And sit at the table like a welcomed son or daughter. And come to the feast that unlocks the power of the covenant. This meal unlocks literally all Jesus paid for. This is a powerful meal. When God cut covenant with Abraham, he ate with him. When he cut covenant with the children of Israel, with the elders, they had a meal. And so Jesus had a meal when he birthed the new covenant. And that meal set them up for Pentecost. And so it does the same tonight as we come to the Lord and his table. But before we do, I want you to be under the conviction that nothing is impossible with God. Yeah. Nothing, nothing tonight. For those of you watching, your home can become the house of the Lord. Your dorm room can become the house of the Lord. Your car can be filled with God's presence. That prison, you know there are uh, prisons all over America that are watching 
these worship moments and we've actually just been asked if some of the prisons could watch uh, our worship as like a rhythmic practice. So every hospital room, God can come in right now. If you're home watching with your children, I want you mom and dad to be the priest that God has called you to be and take out the elements of communion right now and begin to call on the presence of the Lord. I feel like he's filling houses all over the world right now. Uh, Ryan, would you come up here for a moment? Just come quickly. Uh, as I said, this is Ryan Binkley. He pastors a great church in the city and we've got one. You just showed up with a microphone in your pocket, huh? <laughs> Preachers, man, they have them in their back pocket. Sitting next to a pastor. <laughs> um, I want you to talk about that woman who was healed uh, with the issue of blood and some of the different healings you're seeing. Okay. And, and while, while Ryan is sharing this, uh, we all know this, or hopefully, maybe some of you don't, but any time a testimony comes forth, it is an invitation for God to do it again. Remember that. It is an actual moment to grab on. So if you don't know how to pray for the sick, just share a testimony. But I want you to share what happened in church and, and uh, a few of the other ones, whatever the Lord puts on your heart. Yeah. Um, about a month ago, uh, the Lord put on my heart to uh, start a series, um, and uh, we called it Crosswords, just words from the cross that meant something, and I was really out of Isaiah 53, 5. And um, it's the scripture, if you have it, you can throw it up there, but it's where it says, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was uh, bruised for our iniquities. He was chastised for our peace. And by his stripes, we're healed. And we just took four weeks with each of those four words to talk one word on salvation. That's, he was wounded for our transgressions. Many of us have faith for that. You know, once you're saved and you know you're saved, nobody can convince you you're not saved. But many times we don't have that same conviction about healing that we do our own salvation. So we're, nobody could ever talk me out of that I wasn't saved, but I know I wasn't feeling good. So, you know, sometimes you, you feel that, but we just taught the word because he came for those reasons. And we talked about how he was verbally chastised for our peace. And, and, and you know, we're in a day when we need peace, right? Yeah. So we just went down the list. And on Easter Sunday, we taught on healing. And, um, and just taught that, you know, Jesus has already done everything that he's going to do about healing us. Uh, just like he's already gone to the cross for our salvation, he's not going to go to that cross again mm -hmm. for our healing. He's already done it. So it's not a matter of whether he's going to do it. It's really going to be a matter of whether we receive it or not. Mm -hmm. So we just taught it. And then at the end of the service on Easter Sunday, we just started praying. And I just asked people, I just felt from the Lord just to reach up your hand and touch the Lord. Like the woman that had the issue of the blood that reached out and touched his garment. And... Um, in that service that day, I didn't know it, but there was a lady who had been bleeding for three years and she was already in menopause. She was 70 years old. Wow. So she had, she had not had her menstrual cycle in 20, you know, who knows, 15, 20 years. And um, she just reached up and said, I'm gonna receive that for me. And, and uh, she called us that afternoon or that next morning and said, I stopped bleeding. Wow. And um, wow. Come on, amazing. Thank you, Lord. So you, Lord. this was really cool. So she had a doctor hysterectomy already on the books um, for like five days later. Doctor still wanted to go in there, convinced it was probably cancer or something. He didn't know because of the, you know, her age and couldn't find anything. Mm. And so she, you, she knows for a fact she was healed that day. Um, Talk about the one, the lady with well, the, the, the spirit of fear. Yeah, okay, I'll get that in a second. But anyway, it turns out... You got so many. I'm, like, a business I'm, man. I'm a businessman too. And this lady happens to be working at our company. So oh, about wow. a week later, I had a dream that I was sharing this story at our company. I, I'm, um, and, and I, anyway, we had a picnic. We shared it. She got up and shares her testimony at our company, at a corporate function, Zoom <laughs> meetings, everything like that. And we're like, anybody want to receive Jesus, touch of God? And, <laughs> It's amazing. Is this one out or better? Uh, 
she started doing something. She shared her testimony. Another lady came up to me uh, after service one day, and she just said, you know, uh, she just, uh, we're between service, and she said, I, I need you to pray for me, Pastor. And I said, what's wrong? She said, I've been dealing with the spirit of fear. I, I, I just said, in the name of Jesus, I command that to go. And I just felt from the Lord. He, I said, it's never going to touch you again. Come on. And that was it. It was a short prayer. And then I started talking to her husband. I looked over about a minute later. She's on the floor between the first and second row. And a couple of people are praying for her. I go out in the atrium, say goodbye to people, go into the green room, come back for the next service. We do 30 minutes of worship. And... Um, she, right before I get on stage, she comes right in front of me. And I'm like, what did Jesus do? She goes, he set me free. Wow. And uh, as it turned out, this thing would grip her for up to, she, I think she said 12 to 16 hours a what day. What would sometimes. she do during those? Just, cower. just stay in her room? Yeah, just cower down. So we have an evangelistic team. Two days later, she went out witnessing with that evangelistic team. Come on, man. It's amazing. They... they they caught her by herself witnessing one-on-one -on -one to somebody. The evangelist guy that's on our team, he, he just felt led to do, there was nobody out in the streets of Richardson where our church is. He started, felt like to do open air preaching. He started preaching to nobody, open air. And then he felt like to do a solo. And he asked her to do a solo. She came up and sang a solo to the open air. Wow. <laughs> um, our worship leader's brother travels with Jeremy Camp. He's a musician. He had those special things in y'all's ears made, you know, with their thing, and they punctured his eardrum. Something happened. He came to our church three weeks in a row. He was there on Easter Sunday, and he testified that he had vertigo three to five times a day. Wow. Debilitating, he said. Yeah. He said, I've never had it, but he said the room, if he tilted his head to the right or looked back like this, the room would spin. Sometimes he'd fall down every morning he got up. Wow. Went to every doctor he could, didn't get it fixed. And I, the Lord, I had a word of knowledge for somebody's ears getting healed. And he said it was 80% better on Easter Sunday. 80% wow, better. Wow, come on. That's beautiful. Amen. Yeah. And then he came back the next week, and uh, we were praying for healing again. And, and prayed for somebody's ear again, and it got 100% better. And so he got healed. 80 and then yeah. Got yeah. the rest. Yeah. Wow. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. It's amazing. And I, um, if, if, is there anyone here who has had a, an, an issue of blood, something irregular, that's been a, it's been a consistent thing, a spirit of fear? I, want the, I feel the Lord highlighting those two things. I, I want you to, to stand up right now before we receive communion. Just stand up by faith. Thank you, Father. Okay, you don't, you don't have to do anything. There's nothing you can do to earn Jesus. this healing. Jesus paid for it yes. with his stripes. So, Ryan, yeah. I want you to pray over them. But before you do, everyone who's standing, I just want you to close your eyes, Jesus. lift your hands to heaven, and just say this. Jesus, by your stripes, I am healed. I receive my healing in Jesus' name. Now, go ahead and pray for them. Father, we just thank you for the precious blood of Jesus that saves us, sets us free, gives us peace, and gives us healing. Yes, Lord. And Lord, it's in that precious name, Lord, that we command every spirit of fear to go in Jesus' yes, name. Go now. Right now. Come on, you guys. Every depilitating fear we command to go. Rest and Lord, we pray. thank you for the by the stripes of Jesus were healed. Every irregularity, every misfunction of the of the womb or the uterus we command to be healed lord we be thank you that they're healed in jesus name it's by your stripes we are healed we are healed we are healed thank you lord hallelujah and, yeah and, go ahead go ahead you know i learned this many years ago from kenneth hagan um peter quotes isaiah 53 and first peter 2 24 Isaiah says it this way, by his stripes we are healed. Peter quotes it in 1 Peter 2.24, that by his stripes we were healed. And that revelation of knowing that Isaiah was prophesying it's to come, Peter saying it's already been done. 
you just grab it by faith and thank him for it. And it doesn't matter whether you're 80% or 20%, it's done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love you. Thank you. That spirit of fear, just remain standing if you've been dealing with that. I want everyone here just to pray in the spirit for about 30 seconds. If you're near them, I want you to put your, don't, don't touch them. I just want you to stretch your hand towards them. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rev, would you come up here? Just stand up here. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we command that spirit of fear to leave you now. Right now, go. All the anxiety goes now in Jesus' name. The fear of the future, just don't look at me. I can't help you here. Fear of the future, anxiety, all of it goes right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak to you, spirit of fear, and command you to go. Right now, go, be free. Receive the love of God that casts out all fear that is shed abroad by the Holy Spirit who is given to us. Receive the love of God. Receive the love of God in Jesus' name. A uh, young man here in the, in the blue, uh, right here. Students, you go ahead and put your hand on him now. I don't know. What's your name? Caleb. Father, in Jesus' name, let the fire of the Holy Ghost come upon Caleb. I thank you for a full, full-blown freedom that floods his heart right now. Receive the precious love of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You can be seated if you stood up. Pastor Paul, this is his uh, 18th or 17th anniversary? 17th. 17th anniversary of an amazing miracle that took place that I got to see. Uh, Rev, just quickly, I want you to share that testimony before we receive okay. communion. Yeah, just uh, can I say one thing about fear? You know, the sure. Bible says God is love, right? In 1 John, perfect love does what? Yeah, and Romans 5, 5 says what? The Father on the throne will pour out his love by the Holy Spirit into our hearts to flush yeah. out fear, all right? So just when you think about that fear, and look, with this pandemic we've been going through, fear has rattled this nation. People live in abject fear every day, and you all know stories. But fear is from hell. Fear is from Satan. Yeah. And perfect love casts out Thank fear. You. Don't let fear grip you. Yeah. Don't be afraid. So, 17 years ago on, on March, on May, on May 7th, I was talking to 200 businessmen. I had a cerebral hemorrhage in, in the middle of my talk. Artery broke in my brain, bled out, paralyzed me on the left side. I go to the hospital. Two weeks later, I leave the hospital. I had eight doctors. They all said I'd be paralyzed the rest of my life. I couldn't walk one step. My left side was gone. I had a brace on my leg. I had foot drop. You know what that is? You can't pick up your foot. All right. So God told me in the hospital he was going to heal me in 21 days. All right. And I told my wife and my elders, they all thought I had more brain damage than, uh, than the doctors thought. <laughs> but I saw that there was a man named Benny Hinn who was going to be in Baltimore on May 28th, 21 days after my stroke. You and saw that on the television? I saw it in the television hospital. Uh -huh. And so I told my wife, I said, if I, if I get out of here, I want you to take me to Baltimore. It's about five hours. I lived in Connecticut at that time. We were up there. And so I got out, went back to the meeting that Friday morning, and Reinhard Bunke was speaking there. And he spoke to 200 guys, and he said, I'd heard about you at the dinner last night, and I want to pray for you. And I said, well, Reinhard, I'm going to be healed next, next Friday. <laughs> That's what I said, because I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> and so, so funny. <clears throat> he prayed for me anyway, and the German brogue. I mean, I couldn't really understand a lot of what he was saying. <laughs> but the next Friday, I go to Baltimore. I go on th Thursday, actually. And then Friday night, 8.30, in the service, during worship. And the song you played tonight, Michael, was the song that was played. Rivers looked at me, and I looked at her and said, that's the song. Which one? What was the song? Uh, the <laughs> presence. The presence about the presence. Which one? 
the glory, oh, oh, the, glory. the presence, yeah. the presence. That one has oil on it. Told, I told the guys earlier today, I said, when the presence of God comes, uh -huh. God shows up, broken things wait, are made Wait, wait, Rev, real quick. Were you, were you raised in Pentecost? Or no, raised? I was raised Lutheran. Okay. So oh. the, did you ever think you'd walk into one of those meetings when you were in seminary? No. Okay. No. You know, I went to seminary after college seven years. They taught me how to preach and teach. No one ever taught us about praying for the sick because that just wasn't in the, uh, the you know, the, uh, the scope of what we did, right? Sure. So anyway, I go to Baltimore during worship. I'm completely healed. Um, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> tell, them, tell them what you felt and what you said to the Lord and what actually happened. And well, you okay. I was, I was trying to keep it succinct, Michael, but I'll... Well, all, right. all right, so go we go to the worship. There's 15,000 people in this auditorium in Baltimore. And I had a walker and, you know, I, I had to, I couldn't use my left. I could drag my left leg. And so we go into the back. I'd call a friend of mine who was part of Benny's team on the piano, Bruce uh, Hughes's. Yeah, that's her father-in-law. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, your father-in-law. Oh, all right. Good. Great. Anyway, I called him up and said, look. <laughs> Can you get me in? I'm, I'm, I'm crippled, Bruce. I, can you get me in on the ground floor? And he said, go to the gate. They'll let you in. Come in the back door. So Rivers and I go back, and the lady brings us up and seats us dead center right in front of the podium where, where Jesse's sitting. And I said, I think you got the wrong people. I'm a Lutheran minister. And she said, well, the Lord said to seat you here, but I've got I've to take your walker away. And I said, well, if you take my walker away, I can't stand up. And that was about as far as I got, and she was gone with the walker. <laughs> So now I'm sitting there. I couldn't stand up. Rivers is next to me. And so, the, you know, the, these Benny services are four hours long. There's worship, teaching, altar call, offering, and then worship again. It was in the second set of worship that I started shaking like a jackhammer when they played that song in the presence. And Rivers said, what's going on? I said, I think I'm being healed. I couldn't really tell because I couldn't walk. So I'm standing there, and all I want to do now is get out of there. I just want to get out to see if I can walk, right? And so Benny's up there and he says, okay, if you're wearing a brace, take it off and you'll be healed. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm a Lutheran minister first on the front row with cameras all over the place. And to take my brace off, I'm gonna have to take my pants off. You know, and they had this one camera, it was like 30 feet, like a big cyclopean eye, you know, it's coming around. And I could just envision myself, <laughs> take, I said, Lord, I, I don't want to be, this is, I was serious. I didn't want to be disobedient, but I wasn't going to take my pants off <laughs> because I just didn't think that that was necessary, right? So anyway, I'm standing there and I just want to get out of there. And then he <laughs> says, okay, if you've been healed, come up here. Now about 500 people run up. There's, there's seven steps. I'll never forget it on both sides. And people are lining up, and I'm thinking, maybe I ought to go up there. And maybe, I'd... But I'm, I'm, I'm thinking if I take a step and I fall on my face, if I'm not really healed, I mean, I couldn't tell. And so I'm thinking, I'm resigning myself to the fact I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to wait. And all of a sudden, Benny stops and comes. Now, there's all kind of wheelchairs on the platform and all kind of people have been coming up. And looks right at my wife and I and says, you two, come up here real quick right now. Bam, bam, bam. Come up, come up, come up. Rivers thinks this is her 15 minutes of honor and glory, and she takes off, right? <laughs> Me, and you know, off she goes. So, now we've got all this on video. No, I, I don't want to be, I have to be right, fair Rivers. to you. I mean, Rivers is fine. She was concerned a little bit, but I'm feeling like Peter about to step out of the boat. I'm either going to fall on my face or walk. There's no in between. And you have to understand, his father in law is clapping his hands, you two, come up right now, come up, come up. And Rivers is gone, and I'm thinking, okay, Lord, this is it. And I take a step. Wow. And I went, wow, you know? And I, and I come walking across the floor. And when I got up those steps, I went right up the steps. And you have to understand, at home, it would take me minutes to get up the steps. I'd have to break one leg and pull the other one up. And I was instantly healed come during on. worship. Never, come on. so. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Well, God. Amazing. Thank you, Jesus. It gets better. It gets better. And let me just say a little caveat. If God shows up in your life in power, he's going to disrupt it. It will never be the same. And he doesn't care what you think. When God shows up and decides to use you, you're going to be transformed and used 
whether you want to or not. You have to realize God does not give us a vote. He does not give, it is not a democracy, it's a theocracy. And if he chooses you, that's it. So I get up there. There's a guy named Steve Brock. I said, Steve, I've been healed tonight. And I get up there. Now, Benny didn't know we'd been, uh, you know, that I'd been healed of anything. He calls us up and he says, who are you? I'm a Lutheran pastor. No, first of all, he does, he kind of does this thing like this. And my wife and I both got jerked off our feet. I mean, it's like somebody took literally by, you, there, we've got it on video, like took me off my feet. Is that like Luther? somebody just grabbed. And who's catching me? This me. guy right here. We didn't know Michael from Adam well, at that point. Yeah. So anyway, we get back up. Benny says, who are you? I said, I'm a Lutheran pastor. And he says, well, do Lutherans believe in healing? I said, well, I came here to, oh, Steve Brock leans over my shoulder at that point and says, well, tell him about your stroke. And Benny said, what stroke? And I said, well, I came here tonight, told him a little bit of the story. He said, well, the reason I called you up here is because God's going to give you uh, and your wife a healing mantle. Amen. Now, let me just stop for a minute. I had no clue what that meant, but it just sounded like it was going to be something powerful. So he prays over us, releases, a, you know, an anointing on us, and we leave. And so that was 17 years ago today, May 28th. Come on. 17 years ago tonight. Thank you, and Lord. what's interesting, it's 947 right here tonight. It was at about 830 when that happened that wow. night. So just 20, all right. So seven, all right, 70 countries later and six continents, my wife and I have traveled all over the world doing a healing deliverance ministry. I, I, I got connected with Michael. Why don't you tell him about your, how we no, got no, connected? No, no, tell him what happened when you went back to church. He said this week the miracles will start. Oh yeah, Benny, all right, so part of the, uh, he said to me, uh, do you have a church? I said, yeah, in Connecticut. Now, I have to understand, I'm not scheduled to preach for two months because I left Connecticut paralyzed, right? They've got all kind of people lined up. So Benny said that night, all right, when you go back to, you have a church yet in Connecticut, all right, people will go come to your Sunday uh, service this week and they'll be healed, and thousands will come to your church for healing, all right? Now, you have to understand, while all this is going on, I'm hearing it, I'm trying to digest it. I can remember two things. People are going to be healed in my church this Sunday. Thousands are going to come. That's what I remember. So we go back to Connecticut. We sneak in my church on a Sunday morning because I don't tell the people I've been healed. Because you had a guest speaker in. We had a guest speaker. You had a yeah. guy from YWAM actually speaking that morning. You know what your YWAM is? Yeah, I know. Youthful yeah. So I know he does. So anyway, we sit in the back, and this woman comes in. And the minister finishes, and the held elder, held, uh, elder gets up and says, does uh, anybody have prayers? And she raised her hand, and he says, well, what, what's the problem? She said, well, I, I live in 30 miles away, and the Lord told me this morning I've got a really, really serious vein issue in my legs. I lost my job. I'm in all kinds of pain 24-7. And the Lord said, if you go to a church in Westport, Connecticut, you'll be healed this morning. She stands up and she says, well, I was driving to her and tells the people that God said, if I come to a church in Westport this morning, I'll be healed. I've been driving around all morning looking for a church. I drove by this church and God said, that's it. And she said, Lord, it's a Lutheran church, whatever that is. He said, that's it. So she said, I came in here believing God told me that this is where I'm going to be healed. And she sits down. Now I'm in the back going, okay, Lord, I got it. <laughs> She was healed that morning, completely. Prayed for a baby with leukemia. He was completely healed. All right? Wow. And that was that next week, that weekend. So what happened after that is my church got the memo. They all saw me paralyzed. They all saw me healed. All right? So we ended up having over 40,000 people come through there on Wednesday nights for healing prayer in the first uh, 15 years. All right? And my wife and I started traveling about 25 trips a year, nationally, internationally, all over the world doing healing deliverance ministry, you know, on these six continents. Finally, three years ago, I left my church in Connecticut because I wanted to come back to Texas where we left 42 years ago just to focus on the healing deliverance ministry and mentoring people and continuing to give away what God told me to give away 17 years ago. What he said, Teske, is look, what I gave you, I want Does you to call give you it away. Oh, we, you call me Rub, but he calls me Teske. Okay. Give it away. So that's what we do. We really feel like God's given us a gift, a sacred gift. We have to cherish it. We have to honor God with it, hold it sacred, because one day we're going to stand before the Lord, 
and be accountable for the gift that he's given us. And that's an accountability that's going to rest on all of us. All right? Now, this young man here, he came to my church and got whammed by the Holy Spirit in a way. Just tell him a little bit well, about I that. Wanna, I, I feel the Lord moving now. So stay here. Stay here. Stay here. Come here. Come here. Um, I, want, if, I, I want us to receive communion. You got to watch Rev when he starts prophesying like that, Binkley. If you came in tonight with a sickness, I want us to come to the table of the Lord. We're going to receive communion, and then, Rev, I'm going to have you pray. It's, it's your 17th anniversary. So the Lord told you to give it away. Let's give it away tonight. Amen? All right, here you go, Rev. I don't want anyone receiving communion alone tonight. If you see anyone near you who's by themselves, I want you to invite them to receive communion alongside of you. Let's just open the elements, please. How many of you don't have communion? Okay. Uh, I just want you to sit there. I feel like we're supposed to sing one song. Come on, let's worship. Just close your eyes. I'll stand, come on. Forever I am changed by your love. In the presence of your majesty. Singing majesty. Let's worship. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed, but alive in your hands. Oh, singing my majesty. Again, let's lift it, lift it, lift it.
Your body now, give him your body. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. Oh, in reaches.
of the blood, demons tremble. Nothing but the blood. Take the bread. Wonderful Holy Spirit, we invite you now to come upon us as we receive the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. Before we receive, tonight, Lord Jesus, we remember the suffering of your body. We lift the bread high tonight because you were lifted on the tree. We break the bread because your precious body was torn. And we remember the crown of thorns on your head to give us the mind of Christ. And we remember your precious face that was marred beyond recognition that we would be made your image. And we remember the wound on your side to heal our broken hearts and birth the church. And we remember the holes in your hands to redeem the work of our hands. And we remember the holes in your feet, Jesus, that we would live and walk in holiness. We remember, Jesus, your back that was torn to purchase our healing. We remember your nakedness, that we would be clothed in your glory. Tonight, Jesus, we come as one family breaking bread and many pieces are broken as we are many but become one tonight. And as we receive the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, be whole, be free, be emotionally healed. Be healed in the depths of your being tonight. Let every sickness, every affliction go as we experience this precious union with the Lamb of God. In Jesus' name, receive. Hallelujah. The Lord is here. Father, we take the cup tonight. Oh, what a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful Savior. I'm getting filled just being here. Father, we take the cup tonight, the cup of the new covenant. You said, take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant. My blood shed for you for the remission of sin. Lord, before we receive, I plead the blood over everyone under the sound of my voice right now, over every home, over every marriage, over every child, over every church, ministry, business. I plead the blood over you. I plead the blood over this house, 
over Upper Room, over Michael and Larissa and their team. I plead the blood. I thank you that no weapon formed against them shall ever prosper. Thank you for the blood over our lives, over our children. I want you to begin pleading the blood over those children of yours who need to meet Jesus and follow him, over family members who don't know him. As Job, as the scripture says of Job, the enemy could not get to him because a hedge was placed around him. I plead the blood tonight, the blood of the new covenant. We receive the blood by faith in Jesus' name. Receive. Praise you, Father. Stay in his presence here. Can you go to a string? A full, full pad. Yeah. Now, for those of you who need a healing in your body, I just want you to lift your hand to heaven. Thank you, Jesus. All right, you can put your hands down. Rev, I want you to pray, and I'll, I'll join you in a moment. I need to, give me a mic there, John. All right. Um, look, when we think of healing, almost automatically we think about physical healing. All right? And there's nothing God can't heal physically. Well, I've seen Tourette's heal, trigeminal neuralgia, blind Presbyterians in Greenwich, Connecticut, Meniere's. There's nothing we haven't seen seen. All right, God healed, all right? But God heals more than that. You know, sometimes it's, it's easier to pray for a broken leg than a broken heart. Because when your heart's been violated, when that trust has been shattered, you just don't think that you can trust anybody. God can heal that tonight. He can heal your heart. Some of you have strongholds in your mind. You're living in that fear or anxiety and worry or, or fretting. None of that's from God. You know, that is not from God. He wants to replace that with his peace, with his love, all right? Maybe you have a broken relationship with a colleague or, or a relative or a friend or a spouse you know god can heal that relationship tonight too i want you to know that it's it's not only physical but it's mental um, emotional and relational and look and most importantly is spiritual healing you could be healed a thousand times in your body you could be real, raised from the dead like lazarus but if you don't know jesus christ you know, that's the only healing that matters. And Mike, Michael went through that tonight, gave you an opportunity. And I'm just going to trust that everyone in this room has Jesus Christ in their heart as their Lord and Savior. And if you haven't, I would not leave this place tonight. Yesterday, I buried a 27-year-old girl that had a massive heart attack and died instantly. And I'm saying that to you because you never know. You never know what's going to happen. And I say, be prepared. Know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and we're going to pray that he fits your body up so you can serve him, that you can put on the armor of God, that you can become his warrior tonight. Amen? So if you need healing uh, on your body, put it on that place where you need healing. Maybe it's a knee or your back or, your, or maybe it's migraines. You know, maybe it's that broken heart. Or maybe it's a physical heart issue too. If it's an anxiety or a fear, something in your mind that's tormenting you, just put your head there and you may be looking at me now and say, Pastor, I don't, I don't have enough hands. Well, that's okay. Just put it up here. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's a marriage that you want restored. I don't know what it is, but listen, God knows even before you came here tonight, God's going to meet you in this place tonight as a God of restoration. I know my God is good he, and he knows what he's doing and, and I can trust him. So I'm going to ask you to just pray a simple prayer that Michael had others pray earlier, but I mean uh, that, uh, that Ryan had pray. But just say, Jesus, Jesus. heal me. Thank you. By your stripes, I'm healed. And I receive my healing. And I thank you in advance for healing me right now. I'm standing on faith, trusting your word which declares that whatever I ask in your name, Jesus, will be. And I'm asking in your name that I be healed in this place in my life, my body, my mind, my heart, whatever it is. And I thank you now for healing me. I am healed, say it, I am healed in the name of Jesus. And I'm gonna declare over you, you are healed in the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. 
who died on that tree for your resurrection and, and rose from the dead, but also by his stripes, bore every stripe for one purpose, your healing. So we've declared it, I've yes. declared it, you've announced it, you've asked for it, and I'm just gonna trust God that he will honor his word over your life tonight. Amen? Amen. Uh, just stay there, Rev. I, is, uh, I, I see a woman who's, keep, keep playing there. Uh, Joel, keep playing, pick it up a little bit. I, I see a woman there on the right side uh, of your abdomen. There's been an extreme discomfort right here. Just put your hand there right now. In Jesus' name, behold. Thank you, Jesus. Thank behold you, Jesus. right now. I tell you, I feel the power Thank of God you, flowing. Jesus. I feel the power of God flowing. If you need a healing, lift your hand again. I want you, those that are around him, to put your hand on them very quickly, very quickly, right here in the presence Thank of the Jesus. Lord. I don't want you to get their life story. You're just going to rebuke it now, and I'm going to agree with you. Find out what is wrong. Get the name of it, and that's it. And then we're going to rebuke it together. The Lord will rebuke it. Father, it, all right, come on now, let's go. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the name above every name, we curse sickness now. We curse the affliction. We curse the spirit of infirmity. Be gone now in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, be gone. Right now, be gone in the name of Jesus. Be gone in Jesus' name. There's somebody who came in with uh, arthritis in the right hand. I feel the power of God flowing through my hand right now. Be loosed now in Jesus' name. Yes. Be loosed. Move your hand now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I want you to keep praying. Keep praying over that person. Command it to go. I want our team praying in tongues. Just the team, just the team, just the team. Pray in the spirit right now. Every sickness, bow your knee to Jesus Christ. Go. Go. Go now in Jesus' name. There's a lady who came in with chronic migraines you feel a fire on you right now, on your head. The Lord is delivering you yes. of that. You feel the fire of God. Be loosed now in Jesus' name. You suffer from a great anxiety, and it's, it's causing these migraines. As a sign, there's the, uh, the fire of God is falling upon you. You feel the power of the Holy Spirit tangibly, literally, coming upon you right now. Be free now in Jesus' name. Be free right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now. Right now. Right now. Knees be whole in Jesus' name. Legs be whole. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be completely whole. I'm telling you, I feel the healing, I feel the healing power of God. It feels a certain way, and I feel it right now. I want you right now just to begin moving by faith. And you know what else, Miller and Lowe? This is, this is going to be known as a house of healing. I, I see a well springing up. I don't think it's by accident that Binkley's here and Rev and all God is doing. This is going to be like a well of healing, like the pool of Siloam. Come on, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. If you receive prayer, I want you to get out and just start moving. Move it right now. Move right now. Do something you couldn't do. Do something you could not do by faith. If it was your leg, your back, if it was your hearing, have somebody test it. I don't want you to look for your sickness. I want you to look for your healing. Don't think about it. Move by faith. Move by faith. Right now. Don't let your thoughts get in the way. Move your body. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's a lady here with varicose veins. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit, the healing power of the Holy Spirit. By the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Oh, hallelujah. 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 I want you to stop praying. 
We feel the, keep, keep playing though, keep playing, keep playing, keep playing. Is that lady here with the, uh, that chronic pain on the right side of your abdomen? Would you come, come quick. Where did you come from? Indiana, for this? See, the Lord knows what he's doing. Come here, come here. Come behind her, baby. Yeah, you, baby. Come here, you can come too. Come, you came all the way from Indiana to get healed? What happened tonight? It's warm. I need a mic, Rev. Uh, do you have a mic? No, that's oil. I need a mic. There you go. <laughs> what happened came, tonight? It, it got warm ever since I gave birth. And it, been pain ever since you gave birth. And you drove down to get healed tonight. I, I moved a friend down here and we came for this. Yes. For this. Lift your hands to heaven. Father, let the fire of the Holy Ghost come on her. If the Lord is, if you feel a change in your body, I want you, I want you to wave at me right now. If you feel like God healed your body, look at all, look at this. This is awesome. This is awesome. Okay, 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 okay. What, what, what happened to you? I haven't had a stomach pain for the past six months, and I can't eat hardly. Wait, wait. Any so, food. So, could you say that again? I've had stomach pain for the past six months, and I haven't been able to eat almost anything. Just water only. And is it on the right side? Um, it's like right here. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. where I felt it. And what do you feel right now? Feel the warmth of God. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Come, 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 come. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost come upon her and never again you'll know that pain. Be free now in Jesus' name. I rebuke that affliction and the pain. Go now in Jesus' name. Get it out All right, Ryan, you ready? Now watch what's going to happen. When we start sharing these testimonies, I'm telling you, you start celebrating what God is doing, God starts doing more. I want five testimonies on this side. Quick, quick, quick. Give the Lord praise, guys. Give the Lord praise. Raise your hand right here, right here, right here. What happened? Stand. So this is crazy. Um, I don't even know your name. Sorry, Rev. I'm sorry. The uh, Rev. You can call him Rev. He said take the brace off. I was supposed to wear a brace tonight because I've been wearing a brace on my right knee for the last three days because I smashed it on a rock back home in Kentucky. But uh, he's like, no, I don't even wear the brace. Just come. And um, I'm, pre I thought I, I'm pretty sure I thought I tore my ACL again. What happened I tonight? Really walk, but I'm now, I had no flexibility in my leg. Uh -huh. And it was just really stiff, but I can actually bend it. So. How, when's the last time you could do that? Uh, a week ago. Well, five days ago. So. You, is that when you heard it? Oh, yeah, when I smashed it, yeah. You smashed it, and then, and then is all the pain gone right now? No, not all the pain. But, but just you, you gained flexibility. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. That's beautiful. When did that happen? During communion? What's that? When did that happen? During communion? Oh, no, actually when my friend Monica was praying for me. It's a good friend. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, raise your hand. Uh, oh, there's one right there. Yeah. What's your name? Jeff. Where are you from? Uh, Dayton, Ohio. All right. What happened? Uh, a year and a half ago, I pulled something. I was doing some woodworking, and I hurt my shoulder, and it hurts pretty chronically. And then uh, about four months ago, I started having numbness in my hand. So when you called out right hand arthritis, I just prayed for it. But I can't find the pain. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> Uh, well, stay standing. So I see a real soul winner in you. As you started talking, you know, I haven't been this free in a while. It's good to be back. I feel fire on me. Um, you're going to need to lay hands on the sick. And it's going to break open hearts for the gospel. You're going to need a power encounter. Come on, come on, come over here. Don't come to me, come to Jesus. He's going to need to fry your dignity, okay? Yes, sir, you says. <laughs> come close. What's your name? Jeff. Jeff. Father, let Jeff know the power of the Holy Spirit that I feel right now. Come upon him like a rushing, fiery wind. In the mighty name of Jesus, fill his being with your glory and power. Use him. Give him souls in the power of the Holy Spirit. Give him a burden for the lost. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Ryan, go. We gotta, we gotta, do, we gotta stay with the Lord. This, this section is a blessed section. You hold the mic, Ryan. Go ahead. Uh, 
for the last two years, I've suffered horribly from vertigo. And it's absolutely the most unbelievable thing you can imagine. You yeah. feel like you're spinning like a uh, thousand miles an My hour. My dad has suffered with that. I, I, I... And two days ago, I started spinning this way and I was spinning this way. What happened tonight? I came today, I, I had people praying for me that I could come. And when I came, we were outside, it hit me. Uh -huh. And I started going down and sometimes you feel like somebody's hit you and just slammed you down. Yeah. And when I was here, it started again. Uh, when? During the meeting? During the meeting, uh -huh. you know. And so you can't turn to the left, you can't turn to the right, you can't move. You can't set up a lot of times. And it, the minute it hits you after a few minutes, you're deathly ill and you, you start yeah. throwing up. And so I felt that and I just thought, God, please. What happened me. tonight? What happened? I can turn. How long has that been since you could do that? <laughs> to turn? Yeah. Um, I could do it a little bit uh -huh. today. But when you said do something, I did uh -huh. that and I looked up because I was afraid to do it. Did you feel the power of God come on you? I just felt a peace. Yeah, well, that's him. That's the Lord. <laughs> sit down for a minute. Would you sit? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for what you're doing in this precious woman. Seal it in the mighty name of Jesus. Ryan, I want to get some in here. Yeah, right here. What happened? I came tonight with my friend. He invited me with from Houston, and I've been... Did you drive up here just yes. for tonight? Yes, tonight. And I have this need that when I work, stand up all day, don't let me in peace. And I know I have an appointment for the seven of the, this month with me arthritis to see my knee. And tonight, I can move, I can jump. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Come out, come out, come out. Come out. Show me, show me what you could not do. What's your name? What is it? Maria Elena. Maria Elena. Okay, move your knee. When, how long have you not been able to do that? Three or four months. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Come on, close. Hold on. What? Where's the mic? Oh no, when, no, he, he'll hold it. What? When, when I used the steps, I had to, I had to hold this the the step here and put my right hand, my right leg. And then put my right, uh -huh. right, right what, knee. What do you feel right now? Uh, nothing. No pain. Peace. Peace. Yes. And I used to have that little pain that is bad in your body all the time, all the time, all the time. Whoa. All the time it's bad in my knee. They told me I have arthritis and something else. I don't know what it is. You know, the doctors tell you so many things. And today, uh -huh. the pain is gone. And I'm so What? I have peace in my heart because no, my Lord has healed me. And, and not only me, but has healed my whole house for so many things. Do you want to know the Lord's presence? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. You're in His presence right now. Okay, lift your hands to the Lord. Father. Fill her to overflowing. Don't let her go down. Fill her to overflowing. Just hold her up. From head to toe, like rivers of living water. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let peace be her portion. In Jesus' name. For every preacher in the house tonight, every pastor, every missionary, I'm telling you, if you're hungry, you can leave. You can leave with a fresh anointing. Don't, do not settle to leave the same. Don't. You have the purpose in your heart. I will not leave. 
until you touch me. All right, let's let her go back to her seat. Let me get anyone else here in this section. Oh, right there in the back, the gray sweater. What's your name? Oh, okay, I'm Morgan. Maria? Morgan. Morgan, sorry, yeah, pray um, for my ears. What, sorry, what happened? Um, I've been just suffering from heartbreak and grief and I've never, I don't think I've ever had relief from it my whole life. Um, wow. Just with relationships and the moment he started it, Rev, he started speaking about heart. They call you Rev now. I like it. Um, <laughs> I don't know, like my heart started racing. Yeah. And um, I just felt, I felt peace and my friends that came, we came from Houston to come to this and um, they just started hugging me and I just could like feel. Um... Why don't you come here? Come. Where's your friend? Come, friend. You, you brought her? Is there more? Come. You drove up from Houston? Yes. You know what we're breaking right now? Church growth rules. You're not supposed to have meetings this long. Evidently. Who got healed? You, you. Oh, you got healed too. Wait, okay, hold on. Say that again. Okay, so when we drove up from Houston. But give me the Reader's Digest version just because the Lord's moving quick. Got so it. So go ahead. I had a migraine, it's gone. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but w tell me, wh when did it leave? When my friends were praying for me, the same thing. We were just all hugging, like healing prayer group thing going on. It was just, it left when my friend Amy said, like, pressure go. And I was like, whoa, like, it just You know, I, I have suffered with those for years. When the weather changes, I'll be literally in bed all day. So that's not a small deal. And, you know, the fallen mind thinks these types of healings, like a migraine, that they're not valuable until they belong to you. And, and we don't determine the value of a healing based on the actual sickness. We determine the value based on what it costs to heal it, which was the blood of Jesus. Amen? So if you want to have a house or a well of healing, you have to prove to heaven that you celebrate everything from an allergy to a resurrection. You have to prove that to heaven. You've never known peace in your heart your whole life? I think this is the most valuable healing we've heard all night. Come close. Heartbreak. Don't be afraid. Father, fill her with the presence and power. Can all y'all pray? Mo Father, use Morgan. Clothe her with the glory of the Holy Spirit and let her lead many to Jesus. Even those who've been giving her a tough time those close to her, even those in her circle who've, who've mocked her, fill her with love for them and clothe her in the power of the Holy Spirit. Use her life in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You all all came together? Come close. Come around here. Watch out for Jeff. <laughs> I'm horrible with names until the Lord comes. Father, fill. Fill them up. Fill them. Fill them up in Jesus' name. Fill them up. Use them in Houston. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost come upon them. Use them in Jesus' name. Use them. Use them. Use them. Use them. Use them. You guys go back to your seat except for Frida. That's not her name. It was, it was a try. Anyone else? I want to take five more. We got, oh, this, is that a, is, who's raising their hand there? No, no, yeah, right, right there uh, with, with the tat on the arm. Yep, this young lady, yeah. Can you go his way so he doesn't have to jump across the people? It wasn't the boy, it was her. A little boy got healed? Where? Is that a flock? Oh, I got to get that one. Come up here, bud. What happened? I was, I lost my job 
and my car turned off. Come sit here. Uh, and I didn't know that I was gonna come here, but two girls stopped and picked me up and they brought me here. Whoa, 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 whoa time out. So you weren't, you, you, your car broke down? Yeah, I lost my job and I hit a bump because I was upset and I don't know where my car just completely turned off and stopped in the middle of the road. And two girls picked me up and asked if I wanted to come here and I want, I didn't, I can't. Who picked you up? Who are they? Steph and Camille. You too. So you picked her up and brought her here. Yeah. What, do you, what do you think about this tonight? I'm grateful. I lost hope in Jesus, but whenever you mentioned about fear, I let go of all my fear. I'm able to talk, no anxiety. I, uh, what, did you come forward to give your life to Jesus tonight? No, 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 you did earlier, right? Yes. Why did you do that? I'm 50 days clean and... What, what, what happened tonight when you gave your heart to the Lord? What did you feel? Love, happiness, peace, everything but... Say that again. Love, happiness, and peace. When you came to Jesus tonight? Yes. What did you feel? Relief. What do you feel now? Love from y'all. What do you want from the Lord right now? for him to guide me and I don't want control anymore. I want to give him control. Bring it forward. Oh man, this is it. This is it. Man cannot do this. What's your name? Alicia. Alicia. Help me, Court. Yeah. And help me high. Up, up, up. Yeah. Just soft, though. Soft, soft. The Lord's already touching her. Alicia, I want you to ask Jesus to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Close your eyes. Look at him. Say, Jesus, baptize me in the Holy Spirit. Use my life to lead many to you. Fill her, Lord. Fill her up. He's got you. Fill her up. Fill her up from head to toe. Use her life. I'm telling you, she's burning up. I thank you, Jesus, for complete freedom. For the coming of the Holy Ghost. Never again will you know another day of addiction. I break it off you now, in Jesus' name. I break it off you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Guys, you better give the Lord praise. Come on. Oh, come on, stand up. Come on. Come on. One second. I want to take one more. Which one is this, Heath? George. What happened, buddy? I sometimes have these stomach problems. What? I sometimes have stomach aches. What happened tonight? I feel like a warmth in my stomach. When did it happen? We were taking communion. <laughs> and then, were you hurting before communion? No. No, no, you just felt the heat? I just know that I'm not going to have any stomach aches anymore. Come this way. 
You all stretch your hands. How old are you, George? 11. I got saved when I was 12. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I started preaching the gospel to my family at 12. Huh, Seedman? Come on over here, bud. Theo, come here, bud. Let's pray God will get him good. Heath, Jen, come on. Do you know what God could do to America if the kids started preaching the gospel? Come on, babe and Lily, you might as well get in on it. This is Lily, her, his sister. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for healing Georgie. I call you Georgie now, change your name. Fill him with the Holy Ghost and fire. Make Jesus so real to him, Holy Spirit, that he'll never look to the world. Consume him in the glory of God. Use him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Oh, the Lord's almost done. Are there any other little kids here who want the power of God? Little guys? You got to be little. Don't run up here if you're 70. Just because you're short and 70, that doesn't qualify. Are there any little guys who want the power of God? I feel like the Lord has something for the children. Parents, ask your kids. Just ask them. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. <laughs> Don't be afraid, guys. Here we go. Come on. Come down here. Get on your knees, sweetie. Come down. Get on your knees. Seedman, Seedman, can you help me pray for these little guys? Come on. You guys, little kids, get on your knees. Ask Jesus to touch you. Now, don't make me check IDs. You should know if you're a little kid or not. Father, come on, come on, little kids. Come up here. Come up here. Come up here. All right, come on. You, Binkley, come on. I need all the help we can get. Heath, come on. Front row, let's get on them. Rage, kids, come on, little, come on. All my nephews, get on them. Get on them, get on them. Rivers, you know what to do? Come on, Carla, come on. This is the next generation coming up. May they burn for Jesus. We got, you got one more in you? Stretch your hands. Come on. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let the fire of the Holy Ghost come upon the children and use them. Use them, use them, use them. Use them. Save them. Deliver them from this world. I pray they would never live for the enemy a day of their life. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Clothe them. Clothe them. Clothe them. Look how the Lord's touching George. The little kids. Little children. Come on, kids. Come. Come to Jesus. This is awesome. This is awesome. Emma, you guys get your hands on them, guys. Get your hands on them. In the mighty name of Jesus, wonderful Holy Spirit, come upon the children. Come upon the children. Look how the Lord's touching this little girl here. Come upon the children. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, Father, let's lift your hands to heaven. I want to pray a blessing. Father, in Jesus' name, we are yours. I pray that the light of the Holy Spirit would shine upon your people that they would be a burning witness in Dallas and all over America and the nations. Bless them, I pray, in Jesus' mighty name. Let's go out with a song. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you soon.